Wonderful news, everybody. North Korea claims it achieved world's strongest nuclear force. All right, to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Congratulations. The article goes on to say, North Korea has successfully built the world's strongest nuclear force under the guidance of its leader, Kim Jong-un. State media reported Monday as the secretive regime has been bolstering and developing of its nuclear and missile programs. With the power of the revolutionary industry of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea, the country's nuclear force has sharply increased and firmly reached the world's strongest level, said an editorial writer of the Rodong Sinmun, the Norse main newspaper. Which is actually super interesting if you want to learn more about the DPRK. This is a great source. This is, as you see here, is an organ of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea. And it's in English. Sadly, I wanted to go in and read the full article for you today, but the site was down. So, womp womp. But check it out sometime. Oh my god, new Land Rover SUV was spotted in North Korea, capital this year. UN report says they're tracking that? Okay. Company denies it sold the SUV to the DPRK, while appearance points to DPRK's continued appetite for luxury vehicles. Eating them over there. So basically, the most powerful nation in the world, supposedly, the United States was unable to stop the DPRK, a country which they are still at war with, from getting the new Land Rover SUV. Because <laughs> you know he's seeing that headline and he's got to be laughing, right? <laughs> As well, North Korea says it is closing some diplomatic missions around the world. As well, North Korea says it is closing some diplomatic missions around the world. And here is how the West would like to describe why. Prolonged international sanctions and the pandemic era lockdown is the primary reasons. So they may want to say that they're broke now because of these things. But the closures also signal a possible change in North Korea's foreign policy. One more focus on its relations with Moscow and Beijing. <sighs> the North Korean ambassador to Uganda was quoted as saying the North that North Korea has taken a strategic measure to reduce the number of embassies in Africa in order to increase the efficiency of the country's external institutions. North Korea's state-run Korean Central News Agency confirmed that ambassadors in the two African nations paid a farewell visit to respective presidents. So this is a, you know, a friendly goodbye. And there's actually only four or five embassies that are closing, yet in the articles you'll read that the United States will say things like, but there could be as many as 12, even though the DPRK has not indicated such. Imagine that, though, the United States making up stuff about the DPRK. No way. No, never. Going on, the article says, In Europe, Communist Party of the Peoples of Spain said that it had been notified that the North Korean embassy in Madrid is closing due to inability to develop mutually beneficial relations with institutions, commercial and cultural entities under U.S.-led sanctions. Which does point to the sanctions as being a reason, but... It's the inability to have a mutual beneficial relationship because of the sanctions. Going on, the article says, And last week, the Chinese foreign ministry confirmed that North Korea's consulate general in Hong Kong is shutting down, saying Beijing respects the decision. So do I. <laughs> And this Al Jazeera article goes on to say, North Korea says closing foreign missions as part of its regular affairs. We are carrying out operations to withdraw and establish diplomatic missions in accordance with changing global environments and national foreign policy. 
a North Korean foreign ministry spokesperson said in a statement on Friday, adding that while some embassies would close, others would open. This is telling of a much different tale than the story told by the United States. The changes are, quote, part of the regular affairs to promote their national interest in external relations. The spokesperson added, North Korea has diplomatic ties with more than 150 countries, which just pisses off America, I'm sure. <laughs> we said no. Here's a picture of a recent photo that was released of the grain harvest in Western DPRK. And I get on its own, this doesn't prove anything. <laughs> but I do think that it's really cool. And this is some of the innovation from the DPRK's Kumsong Tractor Factory. This is sweet. We just got rows and rows and rows. Last photo, and I just like to sometimes share photos of the DPRK cities, of the countries, of the coast, of their gardens, of their people, of different things from within the DPRK so that people in the West who are mostly who follows me can see that these are regular folks just like you and I. They are not our enemies. Our enemies are not in North Korea, I promise you. And they're not some sort of monarchy either, like I've heard accused. Um, they actually respect and have love for their leaders because their leaders and family actually, not just once, but twice and in many other ways, many more times than that, have successfully fought off imperialists and invaders and those that have... Uh, destroyed their country and helped to split it in two and continue to do so today and to punish them economically and threaten them militarily uh, on the regular. So anyways, I'll stop rambling now. <laughs> <laughs>